California, here I come, right back where I started from, where hours of sunshine. Hey, <laughs> there you are. Welcome to the man cave here at Wistful Vistas in beautiful suburban San Diego, California. I'm just back from a uh, little uh, time with some grandchildren. Yes, I am that old. Uh, in the state of Tennessee. What a great place. What a great visit it was as well. Uh, disappointingly, we came home to cold, rainy California. April, go figure. February, I'm riding around the sunshine. But enough of that. Uh, what's going on today is a couple of things. I've got a few updates to do. But uh, number one, number one to get started is just before we were leaving, I had been overdue as a vlog uh, on the Aprilia. Went out to start it. How many of you had this experience? Went out to start it, press the starter button. <laughs> It, it had enough power to turn over the display and all that other sort of stuff. Would not start the machine. I thought for a bit about bump starting it, but uh, decided not to do that because it can lead to some issues. Um, you drive somewhere, ride somewhere, and you stop and it won't start. Not too long ago, I was in a gas station putting some gas into one of the machines and a fellow rider came up. I saw him ride up on his bike. And he said, hey, buddy, would you mind giving me a push to get me started? So I did give him a push. Luckily, it started on the first bump because uh, sometimes uh, it's more work than it's worth, as a matter of fact. But it did start on the first bump and, and away he went. So uh, I, decided, I decided to start it to bite the bullet and start with a lithium battery for the Aprilia, Tony Thunder. I've had a lithium battery in the Ducati ever since I got it. One of the really good mods that uh, Jarrett put in there was a lithium battery. It's been great, not a single issue. And uh, to be sure now, I've had the uh, battery, which is a Uasa, very common lead acid battery, in the Aprilia, I've had it on a battery tender ever since I bought the thing. It's been on a battery tender, but hey, they only got so much time to give you, and when that time is up, that time is up. So we're going to do a, uh, an unboxing, and then an install, and then a start. And hopefully, by the time all this is over, you'll hear Tony Thunder roar. <laughs> Let's go for it. Okay, are you, are you in there? <laughs> I'm out here. Okay, uh, let's do the unboxing. Sure, I box here. Uh, please do not look at the uh, workspace here. Remember, the man cave is a happy place, but it's a cluttered place, and that's near and dear to my heart. One of these days, I am gonna clean it up. Uh, if you're interested, my 2017 Aprilia Tuono factory is supposed to take a Shorei LFX 19A4 dash BS12. I'll enter that into the description down below for you. Very nice looking uh, box here. The world's lightest, strongest power sports batteries. Okay, um, we open up the box. There are a couple little warnings on the outside here. Uh, one of the strongest is do not use a standard lead acid uh, battery maintainer or charger to uh, maintain or charge your Shorei. Now, the Shorei comes very nicely packaged in the box. I'm gonna take it over and show it to you. Very nicely packaged in the box, and these are not, uh, these are not for uh, cushioning in the box. They're actually used to help securely locate the battery in the compartment or space that you have it on your machine. Oh, cool, stickers. Uh, gotta like stickers. Okay, stickers, uh, spacing pads, a uh, manual in one eight by 12, eight by 11 sheet of paper. Do not throw away the box or any foam packaging until installation is complete, very nice gives you the Shorei uh, battery charger to use if you're going to use one. Uh, incidentally, while we're on the subject of battery chargers and lithium-ion batteries, 
I have never put the uh, Ducati on a battery uh, maintainer or charger, and it started up every time, even after weeks of, of non-use. So uh, we have the hold down bolts with the nuts and uh, washers, four of them, nice. And, the, and again, some more foam. Um, let's just take this guy out. Sweet. There it is. That, oh my gosh, that is very lightweight. If you're a weight freak, I can see why um, Jarrett and uh, Dotto changed out the battery on the Ducati. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenally lightweight. And a box full of uh, foam pads and various sizes. Wow, neato. Uh, I would think that, uh, and the box is empty. I would think that uh, given all of these uh, pads here, you could make this uh, battery work in, in a variety of vehicles, which is, which is what they do, I am sure. Okay, so uh, now I want to uh, weigh this thing. Let's get to the weighing process. What do you say? Okay, we should be recording, hoping to get all the details here. Um, here is the battery. And by the way, to prove that I have had it on the uh, battery tender all this time, the Aprilia Tuono factory, 2017 model anyway, came with a built-in uh, battery tender. I've had mine mounted on the ceiling. It's been very nice, but uh, it, uh, these batteries only have a certain amount of life. Now, interestingly enough, I am using an 8 millimeter wrench to disconnect the current battery and uh, by the way we're doing this live uh, this will be the first time I've taken the battery out of an Aprilia anyway done it on other um, motorcycles but never an Aprilia now this looks to me for an opportunity for this hold down bolt to just go racing down into the depths of the motorcycle never to be seen again <laughs> which has happened before so I'm trying to uh, take it easy using my fingers right now there it is and uh, trying to take it easy taking it off the one thing the big no-no would be to short across the two terminals but we have that red uh, plastic terminal on the other side on the positive side to uh, keep that from happening and uh, as the as we are instructed to do the safest way to start is to remove the negative side first so <clears throat> let go mr. negative side first getting my fingers in there um, luckily I have small small-ish fingers. <clears throat> Man, ladies and gentlemen, that's tight. Okay, so it's loose now. It wants to come out, so I'm going to try and grab it, try and hold on to it. There's the cable. There's a cable uh, that goes into the other bits of the motorcycle and uh, Here's something coming over from the negative side. Now, I also have a uh, power takeoff on the other side. So this is going to be delightful, getting this little thing back on there, by the way. This is one side of the... I'm going to take that out. Uh, this is one side of the uh, trickle charger side. I suppose I could take that trickle charger out, but I'm going to leave it on. Okay, so the, the negative side terminal is released. Let's go on to the positive side. Positive side. We remove the very conveniently located rubber baby buggy 
bumper. Remember to repeat after me, lefty loosey, righty tidy. If you can get in there. One thing about motorcycles, they are, they are, uh, they give you lots of challenges in terms of space to get in and do things. Hmm, can't seem to get that started. I'm going to go down one size just in case. I don't think I can get at that. There is a Phillips head top to that. Uh, I don't think I can get on there though. I'm going to have to get on there with the Phillips. Bear with me, coming back with a big time Phillips. We'll cut this part out. Okay, big issue, uh, by the way, with these screws and these batteries is that generally they're soft. They do them that way for a purpose, so you do not want to strip them. Okay, got it started. All right. This one may be a little bit easier to get at. Okay, it's loose. Now, let's see if I can retrieve that. Okay, got it. Nice little red collar on that thing. Let's take this out, push this aside. And I always like to take the loose little bits, take them away from the field of action where, as noted, they can fall down into the bowels of the motorcycle. Now let's see how hard it is to grab this battery out of here. It's official. It's heavy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a heavy, heavy battery. All right, uh, while we have it out, what we do is check the condition of the terminals to see if there's any corrosion. People use various things to uh, clean the corrosion off of them, but uh, these are in great condition. This, life, this motorcycle leads a pampered life. What's kind of interesting is I have a uh, fuse hold down box and there's screws that are supposed to go back in there and they are not in there. Huh, kind of an interesting, interesting one. All right, let's bring it over here and weigh it. As compared to, one, compared to 1 1.59 ounces, 1.9, 1.59 ounces. Okay, uh, a lot lighter than the Yuasa, no doubt about it. Okay, the next thing we're supposed to do is to put the batteries uh, beside one another and compare them physically because that'll give us a guide to how many of those foam pads we're going to need when it comes time to put this bad boy into the uh, bowels of Tony Thunder. So they are exactly the same. I'm going to call this dimension width and uh, exactly the same this de definition uh, I'm going to call this depth. They are exactly the same. Width and depth. Uh, there is a difference with the height, however. So this one is uh, just a little bit higher. So what we need is the foam underneath this to make it the same height. Here are all the rubber pads that um, Sure, it gives us to put this in there. My, oh my, are they generous with those. Well, they ought to be. It's $150 or so. I'll double check that price for the battery. But um, the nice thing about it is that uh, it doesn't look like we're going to have to do any trimming. So we're just going to stack these little guys um, underneath. That looks like about the right. I'm looking for... Uh, just the right dimension there. And we're going to stack these little guys. And again, I don't think this necessarily, there we got it. That is just about perfect. Uh, it doesn't all need to be exact as long as it's in there snug and it's not going to rock around and knock a battery terminal loose or something like that while you're in the middle of emanating your, emulating their, your fastest lap of the Nürburgring. Okay, so there is not going to be any scissors trimming for me whatsoever. 
The batteries are as close to the same as possible, except of course in that uh, one height dimension, and weight uh, so much lighter. So next step is to install it back into the machine. The back of the, uh, it's kind of nice, this is already notched, I think, for this uh, fuse holder. The back of the Tuono battery cavity, cavity is already uh, padded, so um, this thing can go in there with, with ease, actually. And uh, we're going to put the terminals back on in reverse order. We took them off, we start with the positive, and then put the negative in last. So I'm going, I'm going to cheat a little bit on this and I'm going to put the terminals back on before I put the foam pad underneath because I think I can slide them in underneath and uh, accomplish what I want to get done there anyway without having to worry too much about it. Look at that. Boy, that is, that is remarkably similar. Okay, back at you. Next step. A quick note, the... Um, Bolts uh, supplied with the shore eye are different to the bolts that came on the original motorcycle uh, with the Yuasa. So you will need to change the bolts. Shore, bolts. shore eye gives you four of them, so there's uh, absolutely nothing to worry about there, but they are physically a different size. So. Another little note before I put a critical component back into any machine, I always do a little test fitting just to make sure that those screws are good. And uh, I don't, <laughs> once I get the thing in and I'm trying to chase the thread in to make sure they go in, that indeed they will go in. So I always give them a little, little test run up before they go back on the bike. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there's always little surprises along the way. Uh, when we began this, the terminals were connected at the top here. And um, as it turns out, uh, the, uh, I'll show you the part. It does not fit to go over the top as it did on the UASA battery. So uh, I have to go in from the front, if you will, lacking a little better uh, description to give you there. And uh, we'll put that red thing over the top. Remember, we got to protect that uh, positive terminal. And then we drop this little guy into the battery compartment. Set the uh, screwdriver in my back pocket there. Not, uh, not as straightforward. <laughs> As it first appeared, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me see if I can show you. These two tabs here were uh, coming in from the side like this on the uh, Yuasa, and they absolutely will not go that way with the shore eye unless I cut off one of these tabs. Don't want to do that. I don't want to do that, and I think I've got a, I think I've got a workaround going here, and um, we're gonna we're gonna do that next. Okay, so this one I don't think will be quite the challenge. This one I think we can get in from the top there. Okay, so uh, let's keep going. Let's pretend like, let's pretend like nothing happened there. Take the battery back out. I have one of the new ones. So that'll go through like that. It's a little hard to show you in detail as my Big old fat fingers are on the way here, but uh, hopefully you get a flavor for what I'm up to there. We have to get it started here. Get the screw started. Got it started. Okay, back to the screwdriver. Again, don't over tighten. These are soft materials. Okay, we in actuality we have a battery. Now we've got to get it back down inside the machine. I'm wondering if it's not uh, 
better at the end of the day to have uh, trimmed that metal piece back. But all this is pretty secure under the seat. So there's, it's not going to move around a lot. Uh, <clears throat> let's cover this up. We have a hooked up battery. Now the point is we can see if we've got juice. Okay, the, uh, the light is flashing, so the alarm system is powered. All right, I'm going to get the key here and let's give this a rip. La -da -da. Thank you, thing. Let's put the key into the ignition. Yep, the system charges. Uh, what do you think? Should I push that old starter button? Ah, oh, come on. Let's give it a try. I'm going to let it warm up a minute, uh, and then I'm going to put the seat back on it. It starts, it runs, huzzah. Not, <laughs> not the little 10-minute uh, excursion I thought. By the way, that uh, lithium battery kicked that over really quickly. So let's walk back into the noisy garage. It's going good. Okay, I'm gonna shut it off. Blessed peace. All right. Uh, behold, the seat. And that question has been answered. The seat will go on. Will she start with the seat on? She will start with the seat on. Big surprise there, that little tab just will not fit in the same way that it was on with the uh, standard battery. But we've saved weight, we actually have a running motorcycle, which at the end of the day is pretty important. And uh, we have checked the battery terminals, they're in good condition, and we also have recovered the positive, because that's where little sparky things can get you. We've recovered the positive terminal, excuse me, excuse my old French, and um, it's uh, good to go. You can go as fast as you want on this thing, probably even faster than you want it. Hey, it occurs to me while we're talking about it, and this video has already gone longer than it should. By the way, there is that awesome machine reassembled after fighting me. Got to uh, take down this uh, overhead uh, battery charger now. No longer need it. Uh, let's wheel out the Duke and fire it up. By the way, there's my hand. I keep my thing. <clears throat> and uh, see if my bragging about the uh, lithium battery is uh, true. It has set idle now for oh uh, two and a half weeks. So we'll take it out here, point it in a safe direction, and we'll let this guy warm up a little bit. Oh, uh, by the way, before I do, um, Racing Evo, hot stuff. Racing Evo. Okay, uh, before I do, I just want to show you the black painted kickstand. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Now it looks great with the bike, I think. It just always bugged me that that uh, silver kickstand was there. I will not go back to a carbon fiber one. All right, uh, let me swing a leg over this. Stand her up. And let's see if she'll start. Uh, 
hope my neighbors are uh, asleep. No, wait. No, I hope they're. I don't hope they're asleep. That'd wake them up. <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's not do that. Boy, is that one raucous, noisy uh, little motorcycle. Okay, we'll head back in here. You're gonna lose me with all this noise. Shut her off. Go to sleep. <laughs> Go to sleep, Ducati. So this machine has been shut down for uh, two and a half weeks. And as you notice with that uh, lithium battery, it, it fired right up. So I'm very happy to have installed, to have installed the lithium back into the um, redoubtable Tony Thunder here. And uh, I think that uh, I will not purchase another battery tender. I will take the one out of the ceiling there and toss it where it belongs to go. But um, the uh, deal is do not use a standard battery charger with a lithium battery charger that happened at our local uh, motorcycle dealership, Moto Forza, guys I like. Somebody did that, unfortunately and um, they burnt the place down. They had a fire and it burnt the place down. So like for like, use the lithium charger for the lithium battery. Peace and quiet at the Man Cave, Wistful Vista's beautiful suburban San Diego, California. I hope you learned something from this. I learned that nothing is as easy as it seems it's going to be on the first time out, but the battery install was more or less really pretty easily done.